Good morning, Bethel of Moms, friends, families, and visitors. Welcome to worship. Would you sing with me this morning, please? S who you say I am. Who am I that the highest king would wear? But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free at last he has his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died. Hey, good morning, friends and families and all of you out there in Facebook land. Pastor Jim Beard here, greeting you this great Sunday morning here in March. Hope, you're, uh, hope your day is off to a good start as well. we got people uh, all over the place who are child of God, as that song says. You are the child of God. Whether you are on the, uh, my gosh, we're pulling in people from the, the North Shore to the Southern reaches of Florida, you know, all these different places are uh, coming together as the family of God here in the house of God, Bethel. That's what Bethel means, the house of God. So glad you're with us today. I'm just going to let you know that part of our spiritual journey is, uh, you know, that introspective time, listening deeply to God and to, and to hear uh, that you are a blessed child of God. And, and what's my call upon you? And part of that call is, uh, you know, helping your neighbors along the way. So I'm just going, you know, to when we get to the point about giving, you know, I want you to be thinking about uh, several ways. There are three of them I'm going to lift up today that go with uh, where, what we're all about here at Bethel, but you may have others around you. March, of course, is uh, Food Share Month. Um, I think, I don't know if that's how far and wide, but uh, maybe it's reaching to where you are too. 
we're collecting canned goods and all sorts of uh, non-perishables to share with our food shelf here in town. Why don't you do the same? Take some in. Uh, just a reminder, too, they can probably stretch your dollars a lot further than uh, you can at the grocery store. So uh, monetary contributions are always welcome. You can send those into Bethel, too, and we'll be glad to pass those along. Just uh, let us know that's what you want to give it to. But secondly, um, we have a Project Egg grad student. Remember, uh, Bethel is all about feeding our neighbors around the block and around the world. Well, Project Egg grad is our way of feeding those around the world by training up leaders to go back then to their home countries, in this case the Congo, and um, live uh, their lives forward sharing what they have learned for agriculture. Project AgGrad, we have a student in our midst, Vanessa. We are the host church in the conference for Vanessa, uh, which is a blessing and also a responsibility. Um, she is, uh, was not expecting this, but she became pregnant before she left the Congo and is about to give birth this month, is what we understand. And so uh, as the hosting church, we're sending forth, um, you know, like a Target gift card so she can go get whatever she needs. Uh, life is hard enough when you're in... Uh, a master's and doctorate program. Let's uh, try to ease that a bit. This is going to be the last Sunday that we're going to officially just talk about this, but you can keep sending it in. And again, uh, if you want to give to that, terrific. Um, also letting you know that uh, right in our midst, uh, the McEnany family is still with baby Parker having a heck of a time. This dear little year and a half year old is still suffering with with, with, I don't even know if they can name it completely yet. You know, the seizures and the all those issues that she has been born with, uh, it's taking its toll. Giving to them would be appreciated, too. We'll be doing that here as a church and sending off some support their way. Family here at Bethel. All right, you ready to, to settle in? Uh, by the way, it is a communion week. Uh, remember, we are authorized to bless all of your elements far and wide. So... Um, have a bread item ready for when communion comes along. Have a little juice item ready, and, and then you can lift those with us. Break them, share them with whoever's in the room with you, and share with us the Spirit of God. That's coming up a little later here. Here's a, here's a quick story, though, that gets us started for what we're talking about today. Okay? Uh, I, this, uh, this is a story that came to me from a pastor down the road, and he says... You know, while greeting people in the back of the church one Easter, he says, I grabbed the hand of uh, the one gentleman, and I shook it, and then I pulled him aside for a moment, and I said point blank to him, friend, you need to join the army of the Lord. And the gentleman replied, oh, pastor, I am already in the army of the Lord. I was doubtful, he said. So I asked, uh, well, then how come I don't see you here except at Christmas and Easter? And then he whispered back, because, Pastor, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> Today, we're, we're going to allude to the uh, secret service <laughs> of the Lord, but it has nothing to do with not only coming at Christmas or Easter. Um, it does deal with things we tend to keep secret. Hmm? The stuff we like to hide beneath, beneath all the surface stuff, you know, because we're afraid to, I don't know what, we're afraid of losing control, uh, being found out, whatever. We're afraid to let them all out, you know, type of thing. And so it also deals with, with uh, maybe secrets because some of these things are only known to those who are born from above, let us say, okay? So yeah, our, our Lenten series is called Beneath the Surface. It has a great iceberg theme. Uh, yeah, all that stuff is deep within you and me. And today's message is entitled Newborn Adults. Newborn Adults. So to get us started, let's have this uh, call to worship. And uh, Sue, forgot to say good morning to you. Good morning, Hi. Sue. Can you be the people's voice? And they'll, they'll be the people's voice, too. They Absolutely. Can, they can say it out loud, you know. Sure. You think they will? Um, well, at home, but we won't hear them. 
Oh, okay. Well, maybe if they say it really loud, Lee, we can... We might hear them? Okay. Let's, okay. Let's try that. We'll try it. Yeah. Don't be afraid, folks. Don't be afraid. Here we go. Call to worship. Come into the light. We know the darkness better. The light frightens us. Come into the presence of love. Our fears and doubts overwhelm us. We feel unable to move. Come, let God's love wash away your pains. Please help us. We are filled with fear and sorrow. Bring us healing. Amen. You know, I did hear a couple of them. So that was... That Good. Was, uh, yeah. Awesome. They're, they're participating. So maybe they'll sing with you too. This. I sure hope so. This is a great video. Today's uh, scripture lesson, Nicodemus, is a, he's a Jewish leader and most likely a Pharisee, okay? And he has come to Jesus at night for a, let's just say a personal, a, a private, uh, dare we even say secretive conversation about religious matters with Jesus. And as we listen in on their conversation, we hear Jesus tell this, uh, this religious leader that unless he is born again, he won't ever see the kingdom of God. Hmm. This confuses Nicodemus, who thinks Jesus is talking about, you know, the physical, the earthly matters instead of these things that are beneath the surface. Jesus pushes, you see, Nicodemus to think more deeply uh, and to trust more fully. And I dare say, I think Jesus, therefore, is pushing us to uh, think and trust more deeply as well. So here is this uh, first part of the reading from John chapter 3. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, 
we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God was not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. But Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. Yes, indeed. When an egg and a sperm come together, there's this new conception, a new life begins. Yep, and then the cell, of course, multiplies and multiplies and slowly emerges this new baby. You, get, you know how that all works. The flesh gives birth to flesh. But we are more than flesh, are we not? Hmm. We've been endowed with spirit and soul. Indeed. So flesh uh, does not give birth to spirit. Uh, if it did, then, then, I don't know, you could take a, an amoeba and say, here, watch it, give birth to a soul. And it, it, it doesn't do that. No, but birth, <laughs> flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit, spirit, however, gives birth to spirit. So, along with two cells needing to come together in order to bring about life, God's spirit, you see, is the analogy here. God's spirit and our spirit must come together also in that same sort of way in order to have a spiritual life at these deeper levels as well. Jesus tells his secretive visitor of, the, of all these things that are happening, but you, you're not understanding them. And then first of all, you've got to understand, yeah, but there's the flesh stuff, but here's the spirit stuff that has to come together too. The spirit gives birth to spirit. Don't forget that. And no one, and, and then he goes on to say, no one can see even the kingdom of God unless he or she is born again. Now, I remember personally uh, going on a, a four day, three night uh, type of retreat long ago in my 20s, long ago in my 20s, yes. Uh, and it was a time devoted to being in God's presence and being surrounded by uh, all those who had been, I would call them, they were born of the Spirit. They, they, they were. And it was, it was quite an interesting, wow, experience. It took several days before you, you, might, say, you might say that I was born again because, you know, it's like now I can see this, this kingdom of God in a whole new way, which was being, it's like it was being lived out right in front of my, all my eyes, or, all lived out everywhere my eyes looked and it's like oh my word and so then uh, you know I remember going home after all of that and and seeing I seeing everything just as I had left it and, and in those days that was the dirty diapers and all you know <laughs> and yet somehow it looked surprisingly different being born again is this phrase born of the spirit well, I, I see that as it, it enabled me to see, like, there's the kingdom of God. It, it, it's right here all along, but I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even see it. Hmm. And so to enter the kingdom, one must allow one's spirit to join, to, to, to receive, dare we even go with the uh, metaphor here, to conceive with the Holy Spirit. Let let. Your spirit, join with the Holy Spirit. And then let this Spirit of God continue to, to take root and, and take hold, and then let it grow in you. You know, it doesn't pop out all fully formed. I, I, think, I think we're often afraid to receive, though. Receive, conceive the Holy Spirit, because... It, it, it's so intimate. It, it is so revealing. It is so, um, it, it feels vulnerable. Yeah. To, to be known that deep within. Wow. And we've perhaps experienced um, times when others have, have uh, 
come to know something special about us. And, uh, well, let's just say that didn't go so well. Maybe there was painful ridicule, and someone laughed, or someone dismissed whatever you were saying or feeling or thinking about God in particular, and were afraid to be open. Afraid to be open at our deepest, you know, our deepest below the surface type of stuff. Even to God, we're afraid to be open. I don't know, we're, maybe we're afraid sometimes to be open even to God and to Christ because man, there's just a lot of words out there that says you've got to be so good, you've got to be so perfect, and that it, if you aren't, you, God is not going to accept you. <laughs> and, and, we, and maybe that's kind of what's going on in the story too. Here is Christ meeting with Nicodemus, okay, alone, under the cover of darkness, Yep. He probably kept his distance for a while, just uh, keeping safe. That Maybe that's how we approach too, but Jesus just pulls him right in. Maybe he is trying to protect his uh, vulnerable self, his status, his just he didn't know what was going on, but Christ went right to the heart of things for him as he does for us as well, only to have Jesus see. He's going to see beneath the surface the depths of what's there, and encourages us to, to let go, to trust more, and open ourselves to, to the holy. He calls it be born again. Now, Jesus knows all about our fears of judgment, which, which I think maybe, it, you know, why just a few verses later, it, from what you just heard, He's going to have these words of assurance that he passes on. Because, at, you know, sometimes we hear this passage so often, it's so familiar that, uh, that we, we skim right over it, we forget it. So I'm just going to have uh, Sue read this, these, uh, these verses, which are just a few verses past what you just heard, um, from uh, a different uh, biblical translation called The Message. See if these don't come alive for you in some new way as well. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help, he put, to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who ref refuses to trust in him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one-of-a-kind Son of God when introduced to him. This is the crisis we're in. God, God light streamed into the world, but men and women everywhere ran for the darkness. They went for the darkness because they were not really interested in pleasing God. Everyone who makes a practice of doing evil, addicted to denial and illusion, hates God light and won't come near it, fearing a painful exposure. But anyone working and living in truth and reality welcomes God light, so the work can be seen for the God work it is. Yeah, we are afraid to admit. Uh, Maybe because of our pride, our lust, our greed, you know, all those things. Uh, we don't want to admit them to Jesus or to God, and we fear we'll be condemned if we do. But the reality is that, it, it, hear the words loud and clear and over and over again, that Christ came not to condemn, but to save. And like a, a baby whose body takes years to develop and grow, our spirits do take time, and we will continue to make mistakes but he is here to help us grow, take time to develop, help us embrace more and more and more of this spirit within. You know, it, it's like trust. You know, it, you know how trust works. Trust is not a once and done type of thing, is it? Mm -mm. It, it usually is, is an activity that, that ever deepens with every time it comes around, if it's, if it's going well. Trust is an ever-evolving, uh, ever-deepening relationship with someone else or with our Lord, you know? Here's uh, one way to imagine how, how to keep growing your spirit uh, over time. Here's this story that I share with you right now, and it's called The Bike Ride. 
At first, I saw God as an observer, like my judge, keeping track of things I did wrong. This way, God would know whether I merited heaven or hell when I died. And he was always out there, sort of like the president. Uh, I recognized his picture when I saw it, but I really didn't know him at all. But later on, when I recognized my higher power better, it, it, it seemed as though life was rather like a bike ride on a tandem bike. And I noticed God was in the back helping me pedal. Ah, now, I, I don't know when it was that he suggested we change places, but life has not been the same since. Life with my higher power in the front seat uh, makes life much more exciting. When I had control, I knew the way, and it was rather boring, but predictable. You know, it was always the shortest distance between two points. But when, when he took the lead, oh, he knew, he knew delightful cuts up mountains and through rocky places and at breakneck speeds. It was all I could do to hang on. And even though it looked like madness, he just kept saying, pedal, pedal. <laughs> oh, man, I worried. I became anxious, asking, where are you taking me? Ah, he just laughed. He didn't answer, and I found myself, all right, starting to trust. I, I soon forgot my boring life and entered into the adventure. And when I'd say, I'm scared, he'd lean back and touch my hand. He took me to people with gifts. I needed gifts of healing, acceptance, and joy. They gave me their gifts to take on my journey, uh, our journey, uh, that is, God's and mine. And we were off again. He said, yeah, give, give the gifts away. They're, they're extra baggage. Too much weight. So I did. To the people we met. And I found that in giving, I received. And, and still our burden was light. You know, I did not trust him at first in control of my life. I thought he'd wreck it. <laughs> but but he knew the secrets. He knew how to make he knew how to make it bend to take sharp turns and jump over clear clear places filled with rocks and fly to shorten the scary passages. I'm learning. I, I'm learning. I, still learning to, to just shut up and pedal in the strangest of places. And I'm beginning to enjoy the view and the cool breeze on my face with my delightful, constant companion, my God. And when I'm sure, when I'm sure I can't go on, anymore. He just smiles and says, pedal, pedal. Lord, I stand in the wind, feeling it blow against my skin. The evidence only in what I hear and feel totally indistinguishable to my eye. It's invisible way the key to understanding the powerful reality of your kingdom. The kingdom of God that offers a new way to be born, a different way to see, a way that was before unfathomable, but now brings new light to our needy hearts and sinful souls. It lifts and destroys the condemnation and gives instead eternal life through Jesus. Amen. It's 
time to uh, turn to that time of, of communion again, to, to commune with God, which sometimes brings that spirit deep within us. So I uh, just want you to know that uh, United Methodists believe the communion table is open to all. And as we prepare, know that you can be a part of this if you also seek to have communion with Christ through this sacrament. And uh, ever since the pandemic, we have been blessed to be able to say over the airwaves, we can bless these elements as well and invite you to partake with us at this time. So the invitation has been sent to all to come. Let's begin with these words of confession. Gracious Father, loving Mother, eternal parent of us all, you were the one who called us into being and formed us in our mother's womb. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You are the one who continues to give us each breath we breathe until we breathe our last. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You are the one who calls us to be more than dust and inspires us to seek after heavenly things. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You are the one who is in control, yet we are afraid to turn our lives over to you. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. We protect ourselves by holding lightly, tightly, tightly to the idea that we are in control the right, and that the world would, will get better if we can maintain control. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. We are afraid of giving in, afraid even of giving in to your spirit. You call us to dive into the holy river of your love, but we can't get our feet to leave the ledge. Is there not another way? To your kingdom? No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Amen. We often look for uh, easier ways to approach these things. Uh, it's a matter of trust. Uh, it's a matter of diving in. It's a matter of uh, turning your whole uh, spirit. Uh, God, take me. I, wanna, I want to be your disciple. I want you to rule my life. I want you to be there. And God says, you, you're my beloved child. All sins are forgiven. Just come to me. Just come to me. So uh, let that be your story that you embrace deeply at this time. Let it be a, a, a something that when you read the Bible again, you're not seeing all the judgments. You're seeing all the uh, acceptance, all the love, all the, the ideas there that say, um, God is on your side. If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, God is on your side. From uh, the very beginning of creation, all through those prophets, all through the story of, of the people going through such trials and, and failing but continuing to, to come back to God. And here's the story of Jesus, of course, with all that Jesus brought to us. He came to give us life, came to give us life and, and not condemnation. And, and so we, we have that story that he just will give it all. He's going to give it all. And that's why we remember this part of the story over and over and over again because it's the night before he gave it all. He, he, he took the bread. Remember the bread? The uh, bread that was on the table for that night. And he blessed it and broke it as the customs were there. But then he said, no, this is, uh, this is even more than that. This is... My body, which is broken for you. Wow, powerful words. Do this in remembrance of me. And, and then the story was, yeah, he took the cup, a cup of blessing, a cup of juice, a cup of celebration. Yeah, ours is not fermented as theirs was back then, but uh, it, was, it was a cup of, of joy. And he then goes, ah, but, but it's more than that. Uh, this is a cup also. It's the life force within me to give to you. It is my very blood, so to speak, to give to you. Now, drink this as oft as you can in remembrance of me for the forgiveness of sins. And, and so we come and we take these elements, and I invite you to uh, pick up your elements at this time as well. 
Okay? Raise them up high here. Let's have a little prayer for them. Holy, gracious, Holy Spirit. Be upon all the elements near and far, from the north to the south, the east to west, wherever this message is being proclaimed. And the elements are you. May the Spirit, your Holy Spirit, be upon them even as we partake of them now so that deep within us, your Spirit takes hold. Your Spirit goes deep into our bodies, but mostly into our souls. May it be so, so this day as we share these elements together. Amen. And so... With you, let us break the body of Christ. Remember the sacrifice. Let us lift the cup and partake of that. Remember the life that was poured out for us. I invite you to do this and give to all those works of God all around you. We'll be back uh, momentarily. Holy Lord, we are ready to go forth again as your people, ready to, to be uh, more, be your light, be your love in this world. Thank you for filling us again, helping us to grow even deeper so that we may go forth and be your disciples. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes, Sue. Guess what? Um, is it almost time to send them forth? <laughs> yep, it sure is. It always <laughs> is. Oh, dear. 
but we will uh, we'll send them forth with things. You know, there's a, for those who are connected to this community, they probably want to know about some people and some actually memorial services that are coming up. So I'm sure they are. We're, we're going to let you know. So uh, Dr. Chuck Carlson passed recently. Uh, his celebration of life is taking place actually at two separate times. He was a longtime resident also at Lake Minnetonka Shores. They will celebrate there as kind of a private for their residents this coming Wednesday. Um, I believe it is at 4 o'clock. But then there will be a more public celebration um, celebrated at St. John's Lutheran for everybody on April 15th. So keep those prayers going for the family. Also, we want to remind people that uh, Kate Fox, who is a longtime and beloved member here too, her service is coming up this Thursday. Busy. She was just always a, such a joy. Uh, visitations at 10 on Thursday, the service is at 11. Uh, luncheon will take place afterwards at the American Legion in Mound. I will not be able to officiate because of prior commitment, but Reverend Cheryl Good, former pastor here, will be back to, okay. to uh, celebrate her life. And I believe uh, Margie Austin, who is a longtime pianist here, will be providing the music. So nice. that's kind of nice, too. Nice. Uh, two other funerals that are coming up here at Bethel. Monday, March 20th. David Cross, his life will be celebrated. Now, you may not know that name as well around here, but I just wanted to let you know that it's happening. It will be taking place here at Bethel. David actually and his wife, Ginell, were um, members actually at Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church, but live out here. Um, they wanted to have the service out here, which would be closer for people who knew them and uh, connections that they have here with people at the church. So that will be Monday, May, tw March 20th, uh, just so we have that straight. And also just received news over the weekend here that um, we had anticipated this, but Norma Babbitts has passed also. She was in hospice for several months here. Um, that was just yesterday, and an uh, email from her son that was very specific. She, she lived to be at age 96, wow. three months, and 10 days. <laughs> wow. I thought that, that was very specific. <laughs> very <I> specific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that uh, date and time has not been yet set. That is just uh, too fresh, but we will be celebrating her life as well. Keep all these families in your prayers. What else is happening? Well, we have Cynthia Williams coming up in March here. She's who's, coming here. Who's she's, Cynthia Williams? Uh, you know, she's the district superintendent. She is. We've been kind of rolling through them because the conference has been doing its, 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 its adjustment Moving. to make it all work the best. And uh, if you haven't met her, she will be here. She's going to share a message on the 23rd Psalm, actually. Not quite sure how we can or will uh, do the online, but uh, maybe she can record something. Ahead of time. We'll see if she can come in early. Whatever. We'll just see. But um, we may have to modify or skip the, the online service of that day, but we'll just see what we can pull off here in the okay. next couple weeks. Right. Um, there will be a congregational gathering for those who like to come and eat and be together, by the way, after that, so she can talk more about the future of, of our church. Um, also, speaking of the future of our church... As a faithful community, I love, I heard this just recently this week. It says, our focus needs to be on how to keep opening our doors to others and not consumed with just keeping our doors open. Oh. So there's talk about maybe opening our doors to the whole wide community to come in and say, you know, Scotty B's, this beloved little cafe has closed. Maybe we should open the doors to be a place for a simple little coffee shop for folks to come and cool. hang out. So they're, they're looking at that, and that's going to be talked about, too. So that that's kind of good. But um, that's about that's about it for today. Okay. Yeah, our Lenten series is going to continue next week with Beneath the Surface once again, and it, the message is entitled Dry Waters. <laughs> Dry Waters uh, sends us deep into the thirsting soul of a woman who has had Five husbands. Mm. Oh, yeah. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's our closing song to send them off to? It is Born Again by Third Day. You said you recognize that from? Uh, from a 
well, a long time ago. Okay, so 2009, that really isn't that long ago, <laughs> but it seems like a long time ago. It was a long time ago. That was, those were our new day It was, yeah, our new years. day years. Yeah, um, when we were together there. I was researching it just because I wanted some little tidbit or something to share, and the um, lead singer actually came up with the lyrics or the beginning lyrics for it, folding his laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Never know when inspiration is going to come your way. Right, God just exactly. comes crashing in. <laughs> Did he finish all his laundry and then go right? This no, guy? he oh. dropped everything and ran and got some paper to write it down <laughs> on. <laughs> Don't you love it? Yeah. Stop now. Here we go. Right. Don't lose it. I, I feel that sometimes. It's like, I'm writing away. Oh, that was a great thing. Quick, quick, go. <laughs> Oh, I gone. forgot it. I forgot <laughs> it. I didn't write it down fast enough. So, no, I understand. Drop the laundry and listen to God. Yep. Maybe that's a good lesson for today. Drop the laundry, listen to God. Drop the laundry, listen to God. Drop the laundry, listen to God. So, from, from God's house to yours, you never know what God is going to it, come and inspire you and go deep with you. So, when it happens, drop the laundry and listen to God. Got it? Go forth. Have a blessed day.